Welcome back to Stationers, and I thought we'd do a bit of a base tour slash base update video. I've been doing a lot of electronics, and of course, that's that's perfectly fine, but, um, you know, we probably want to do a base expansion episode just to give people a break from electronics. The system is working quite well. That uh, that battery does run out during the night, which is good, and of course, that obviously shuts down all the electronics. Uh, we can probably get rid of this transformer, to be honest. I had it just so I had a manual, an easily available manual switch. As long as that APC has an ability to, to control its on or off state via data, it'll work just fine on its own. So, you know, feel free to not use the transformer in your own, own setups. Yeah, so let's just take a quick look at the base so far. What, what have we got going and what, what do we need to do? So we've got, um, if you like, uh, our furnace room is down here. Uh, you can't really see the rest of it. It's uh, it's under underground. But we have the pipework here, which takes any ores that I dump when I'm um, mining, that I want immediate processing, from this bin downstairs. And we have our hydroponics bay. Obviously, you've seen, hopefully you've seen this before. Uh, the air conditioner's on. We've got a nice setup down there. I just need more and more CO2. There is a bug, by the way. You can cycle, uh, I think you can cycle all through a furnace. Not the arc furnace, but a regular furnace. Put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. And it keeps on releasing gases. I'm not going to do it because it seems a, quite a bit cheaty. Uh, but uh, if you want to do that yourself, I'm sure you can get more gases that way. we got our mixing chamber here. Obviously, I've take the walls out because I'm still doing rearranging work down there for the uh, the gas sort of storage room. But uh, these are pretty nice, well set up. And over there is just a sort of setup. There's nothing really, there's nothing really uh, too expansive about that. The main work I'm going to do today is down in the base. Uh, I think we're going to put in some new doors, which I haven't shown you before, but they are pretty cool. Let's just uh, unlock the airlock. So these are the glass doors. They, they look very nice, but you can't really label them too easily. <clears throat> Instead, I'm going to use this door uh, <laughs> when it's not facing the ground. And if you scroll wheel, you'll get composite door, which is the other type. And I'm probably going to put the power on the inside. Uh, will you let me put you there even with that? Yes, you will. So you get a, quite a, a smaller door than this, but you do get the ability to relabel this. So if we can just uh, turn on our relabeler, we can just say uh, gas storage. And you'll see it takes up the label on the door itself, which I think is pretty cool. That's a really nice feature. Of course, that doesn't have any power at the moment, does it? <laughs> so, I mean, I can crowbar the door open, but it helps if you actually have some kind of power. Have we got some power around here? We do. Okay. Um, this portable air conditioner can just get thrown away, really, to be honest. Did have a comment about that actually being in hard vacuum? Why is the heater even on? It's just controlled by electronics. Uh, I could shut it off easily. It's just uh, no need to just yet. Let's just pop in a couple of four-way junctions and let's drop the grill work for a second. Let's cut you off. There we go. And a four-way junction. It's exactly the same cost. Okay, and you, you've yeah, got power now. So yeah, we can open the door. And I think what I'm going to do, probably not in this episode, but in another one, is I'm going to put a passageway in there. Uh, move this pipe up one and over, and you'll see that the gas storage tanks are there. So we can put so steps to going down or something like that, and then across and round. I do want to discuss one brief bug I've been seeing as well. It's quite subtle. Uh, you don't tend to notice it at first, but it does uh, show up. Let me just close that door, and then we can head downstairs. So I've started to expand this area as well, so I'll put more iron frames in. I mean, we're, we're getting the start of a corridor here. I can put lights on the top, and we've got some more of these doors. So we've got furnace room and construction. So behind here, uh, I'm going to obviously mine this out. But uh, I think I'm going to move all the machines down here. So we have our furnace opposite the, the, the area that uses them. So that seems a pretty good idea. And then maybe we can have our main first room up there for storage. But if we pop in here for a second, you'll see the problem. If you've been following the episodes, you'll know what this room looks like. I've been in here, in here for about three episodes uh, doing work on it. However, uh, I've put these iron frames in here. Um, I guess we can get rid of them for a second. Uh, which tool is it? Angle grinder? Yeah. And off they go off the end. You'll see this hole. 
This hole was not this big. <laughs> this is the bug I want to talk about. It seems like um, whenever you have, or uh, this is only a guess, but whenever you have sort of geometry or, or blocks next to a natural cavern like this, the natural cavern seems to erode or decrease, um, well, sorry, increase in volume. Uh, and I don't know what's causing it. Um, so what I'm going to do, and what I what recommend you do in your bases, is don't leave um, walls just natural like this. Do do work on actual walls, on blocks, and make sure that you seal in rooms that way. Because if I show you another example of this, <clears throat> and this is more, <laughs> more a problem example, pop back up here and head towards our gas storage. If we pop in here, over on the right hand side here, I've got a tank here. This is my oxygen reserve tank. But you notice this here has appeared. I don't think that was there before, or at least it wasn't this big. And of course, now it's starting to increase outwards. And I can see, <laughs> I can see stars. <laughs> my God, it's full of stars. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's going to have to be worth sealing stuff in if these bubbles or caverns or whatever you want to call them, uh, mini caves, are going to increase like that, you're going to have to seal stuff into your base. So yeah, just just keep that one in mind and uh, use a lot more iron than you probably were expecting if you're underground. I've run a power cable now down here, as you can see. So these doors are powered. What it means I can also run that power cable over and through here into this room and then power these furnaces from our main array if we wanted to. And uh, now if I'm going to do that, this then um, becomes redundant, at least sort of. <laughs> um, what we could do is we could just disconnect it from the solid generator and reconnect it as a second sort of set of batteries from the main power line. Or I could rejig it to be, you know, in case of this power loss, uh, we just connect this up. So if I connect up the main line here, uh, if the main line ever runs out of battery, it'll start running off this solid generator, which will also supply power backwards to the rest of the base if it ever runs out of battery as well. That ever runs out of, you know, the batteries and solar panels upstairs. So I think that's probably a good idea. It may not necessarily be then the case that I need to leave this solid generator and battery in this room. It may be best positioned somewhere else, but for now, it's okay. I think what I also want to do, and this is a bit more commentary than anything else, is put um, a capture system in here for uh, these furnaces. The The arc furnaces are really handy to, to not, need, um, not need a furnace mix, but they are going to emit gas into this room. At the moment, of course, we've got this big cavern that just absorbs all the gas. And you can see it's 70 degrees in here, even though the the uh, we're in hard vacuum. Uh, is it any different over here? Yeah, it's zero, 70. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the calculations are a bit wacky when you get down to close to hard vacuum. So there is pollutants in the air in here. So we do want some kind of way of capturing it. So what I may well do, no point at this episode, but I'll probably put in an active vent. You've seen me do this before and just active vent it to a canister or a portable tank or something along those lines so that we can just keep capturing those those gases and reuse them. So onward to, I think what I'm going to do this episode is just, just really, I'm just going to do some expansion and put, put some lights in, uh, put some walls in, and hopefully you'll see the base a little bit better, a little bit cleaner once I've done that, and a couple of the miscellaneous things around the base. So one thing I'm going to do is actually order some furniture. I know that seems a bit too decorative for me, but uh, we're definitely going to order some furniture. And let me just pop that down over there, and it should start building. I'm probably going to increase that by one, just so that it makes two lots of furniture. It's in there already. And this will help us mount some of the other stations that I've got, but never actually used. So furniture, um, we've got a chair, we've got a bench control chair, we actually want the bench. Um, I guess you could put a control chair in, but that's mainly for ships, and because we can't build ships in survival yet, uh, yeah. And also, I have problems with chairs. Uh, for some reason, I managed to switch my controls whenever I try and get out of a chair. 
and uh, then space is select and left mouse click is is jump which is really really odd but we're gonna go for bench regardless uh, I think did I have a um, some power here uh, how about was the bench was it let me it's gonna need power in front of it not behind it uh, slightly annoying hmm do I have power where is it it's there as well that's annoying wherever I want power I don't have it in the right place well I guess we can put it in front of that power cable ah, I want it connected to a wall let me rearrange something okay that's now rearranged <laughs> uh, yes it's a little bit ugly but it does actually work uh, let's put the floor back and there we go we got a bench we can turn on and there's a couple of outlets i'm hoping that it does actually have a couple of outlets and they're just not one outlet uh which would spoil this effect and require me to reroute the power again <clears throat> excuse me so let's grab the microwave or the chemistry station so let's, let's look at the chemistry station we can just pop that on here um pop it on there and let me actually just close that up and we can use this to connect it down Yep, and hopefully the microwave will also go on there. That's why I was just hoping there were actually two slots, not one. Will you go on there? Yeah, you will. Good, good. Okay, so this is how you connect these to power. <laughs> they require plugs on a bench. And, of course, you have various recipes. Now, if you have a um, done the tutorial for Stationers recently, they added these to the tutorial, at least the microwave to the tutorial. So these have certain recipes. I think the, the pill is something you make in the chemistry station, and the microwave allows you to make muffins, I think? At least muffins. Although the, the tutorial for muffins had milk. I'm not sure where we're supposed to get milk. I mean, we have chicken eggs, that much is for certain. We have wheat, uh, presumably to feed the chickens. Where are we going to get milk? <laughs> um, I have no idea. Uh, almonds? Uh, almond milk? I, I uh, Who knows? Who knows? But, um, yeah. So these machines are for that. I thought I'd just put them up and construct them so that they were available. So we can turn them on, as you can see. And turn these on, of course. But, um, yeah, it can't do anything without the relevant recipe. And uh, we don't have the components for that. The chemistry station, by the way, creates the heal pill. So that lets you make more heal pills if you need to, which is sort of a way of trying to stop people from dying. But uh, for, for now, we'll leave that alone. So I thought I'd also put in a suit storage uh, system into the base, and uh, there's a few bugs with the, the suits. Um, and also, I'm not quite sure what this is actually doing. I mean, the space pack uh, just has slots in it, so I'm not sure why this needs a, you know, a suit storage breathing vent, unless it's meant for hookups, it automatically fills up another suit uh, if you have things in the slots. Great, if that's so. Um, and propellant. So yeah, maybe we can fill up a suit automatically to ready to go. Not that I particularly need that, of course. I'm happy to get canisters from wherever. <laughs> but bear in mind, when you pick up a space helmet that isn't your own, even if you've got one attached, there's a bit of a bug. Um, because of the temperature drop. I'm not sure if you saw that. Temperature but low. Temperature see, critical. Yeah, yeah. Temperature I, okay. low. So I'm not sure why that happens, but uh, it doesn't seem to be any common sense unless it really is trying to it confuses your space helmet with the other space helmet. But hey, I'm just going to use that as a rack, essentially. I'm not going to use it to, to be powered or anything. You can power it. It does have a switch as well as connections on the back for power, I think. I don't think they're on the bottom. I think they're on the back. But I'm just going to use it as a rack, a shelf, basically. I can put them in a locker and use that instead but that's sort of meant for the purpose so maybe we'll reuse that again later uh there's plenty of other things we haven't really built in the fabricator before that's probably worth having a look through i think one of the ones that i'm going to use is for the consoles we're going to use uh something further down the circuit boards i think uh or are you at the top probably are probably missed them 
circuit boards. There we go. So power control in particular. Uh, the power control circuit board, when you put it in a console, and set up the data disk, lets you turn off power, but not just to one thing. You can set up multiple things with the data disk. So I thought I'd make one anyway. And um, can we... I can rip this one apart just temporarily, I think, because I don't know how I'm actually using the, the, the system to contain stuff at the moment. So we want something else. Let me go set something up. Okay, so I've put in a console, and that's the circuit board in the slot, so we can just construct the console and throw that away for a second and put in the data disk on the left-hand side, turn it on, and then we get an option. So we got manual operation, mode toggle, linked. Yeah, so if I add all the wall lights in here, for instance, uh, will it let me scroll wheel through here? Oh, it's going to need me to unbam. Oh, nope. <laughs> This is only the real problems of interacting with any scroll wheel things. Uh, we're going to interact with all the wall lights, let's say, and see if we can see them. Wall lights. All oh, wall lights. And that's enough. I think I've got them all. Yeah. So toggle. Let's just grab you. So we can toggle power. <laughs> I've missed one wall light. Okay, but you get the idea. You can switch on and off things to any part of your base using one of these consoles. In particular, I'm probably going to use it to toggle the power to all the construction machines once I have a construction room down there. And, you know, down at the bottom on the right hand side. I showed that with I showed you that um, door. So yeah, we'll just head in there, press a button on the wall, and everything will come on, and then I'll just hit it on the way out. Or indeed, we could use that electronic setup I showed you a couple of episodes, or oh, last episode, episode before just to turn things on for a couple of minutes while I'm in there. Uh, we could do that as well. There's no real no real problem either way, except that just uses a lot of electronics. This is a much simpler approach. So if you don't like electronics, go with this. And yet more examples of weird terrain issues. You can start to see the terrain up here shrinking away from the top of these stairs. I don't think that gap was there previously, but certainly this piece of all wasn't here previously, I don't believe. And so ore is moving around a little bit. And even where I've gone for gold on the other side, this cavern has opened up. That wasn't there, definitely. Now we can pop over here for a second. And we've got some silicon, which is fine. So I can mine that one up. But further down, again, uh, what I don't know is how much of this is natural and how much is just, you know, some, some weird terrain issues. So if you know any solution to this, do let me know. Uh, it may just be something the developers have to solve. Okay, so our corridor's coming together. We've got, um, you know, our doors down here and some walls. Uh, the stairs are a little bit mm, tricky. <laughs> I kind of like to have uh, a sloped ceiling. And, of course, with these regular IF frames, you can't really do that. Uh, you just have a stepped ceiling. It ends up looking very Minecrafty. and Ooh, some ore there. I wonder what kind of ore you are. Kind of ore. Ah. Oh, well. Just mine. Never mind. So, yeah, I'd kind of like to have a sloped ceiling. We can't really do that with iron frames. We can with steel frames, but I'm not sure if there's something you can actually complete yet. So, yeah, we can have this sort of sloped ceiling. Um, do we have any way to weld them, however? Um, let's have a look. Yeah, doesn't seem like uh, it allows me to weld them up. And uh, we can't use just steel frames, uh, steel sheets to complete. So yeah, if you want a sloped ceiling, you can have it, but uh, you can't weld them up yet. So I wonder if you can, I wonder if walls will actually uh, cover them. They probably won't if they're not weldable, but uh, let's just have a quick look. Uh, construction kit walls in here. Construction kit walls. Let's just make one. And it probably won't snap to it. We'll see that in a second. You should be completing. The only problem with this fabricator, it is slower than the individual machines. So for dedicated machines, I think we're going to... Yeah, so uh, that's just not going to snap, is it? No. <laughs> that's such a shame. Because uh, that's the, the only angled block I know of right now. 
uh angled windows would be would be really nice as well i've got window blocking down here but uh oh we've got some iron <laughs> but yeah again this is not an angled version so everything's gonna have to be look pretty square at the moment unfortunately but i think i'll just fill in the rest of those i'll put in uh, you know the stair step behind them just so that we have a solid um solid block but otherwise i'll fill the uh, the angle blocks in and then hopefully soon we'll be able to um, weld them up and now I have a way down to our gas storage system, just with some stairs and back into this room, so we can now seal this up. <laughs> I'm going to need a lot of iron to seal this up, however, so I'm going to have to go mining between the episodes or in a few episodes of time. And there's some water. Not sure why it's pooling sort of in midair, but hey, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> So let's reconnect this again. Uh, we want the console dual, not the monitor. And make sure I construct it the right way this time. There we go. Now we can just fill in that last bit of this console room. And they're all now constructed. So I, if I have the data disk on me, I think it's uh, just back in here. Uh, I thought I brought it down. I did. Good. We can just configure the rest of these as temperature monitors. So you can go to temperature and small tank. Thank you. Um, they don't have anything in them at the moment, so that's not a big deal, but it will uh, just help configure all these. So temperature, one more, two more. Actually, that should have a temperature. Why? Oh, did I not select the tank? Uh, yeah, there we go. Minus 152 degrees C. <laughs> so at least that gas will be quite compressed uh, in the oxygen tank. So, yeah, uh, quite happy there. And lastly... There we go. So that's all, all the... Uh, the console's configured and because they're all already in power what, we make, what I showed you earlier where you can switch off all of these at once with one power switch I think I'm going to do in here as well just to save power on these consoles so every time we want to come in here and take a look at these things we can just flip a power switch and probably include some lights as well and everything will come to life but otherwise it won't consume any power so yeah I'm quite happy with that solution I don't want any kind of automated timer solution down here because I'm not going to be down here that often I just may want to pop in and flip a switch okay that's uh, about it for this episode i think uh, it's going to be a bit of a base buildy episode obviously so those of you who liked electronics only uh yes i just decided to do something a little bit different for this episode give people a break from too many electronics <laughs> i know uh it can get on some people's nerves so i thought i'd give them a break and um yeah so i'm going to continue constructing this between the episodes um, probably do something more uh, in-depth next episode. We'll see what, what I've actually got going. Uh, but we are kind of reaching this the content or the end of the content for the game at the moment until Dean Hall and his team at Rocketworks get their act together with more content. So, um, yeah, uh, again, just as I've said in the pre previous couple of videos, if you have any ideas for any more videos, anything you don't know yet that you haven't seen yet, please do let me know. Otherwise, I'll just complete finishing... The, uh, <laughs> I will just finish the base as is, um, add some a couple more systems, and I think they were then done until the next you know, sort of big content update from uh, Rocketworks. Otherwise, we may well do some Space Engineers content just to show you that, or Empyrean, or a couple of the games I'm having a look at as well, um, and we'll see from there. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to thumbs up if you've liked it, and um, subscribe and share as normal. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.